Hey guys, it's the Squid here with the review of the real great gold uh gold frame of Matsumina, and it's finally here. Um, you guys can go check out all the previous videos if you want to of the let's build, the unboxings. It's all here. Um, of course, there'll be the end screen annotations towards the end of this video where you can click on the following videos. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, this is the box. We did go through the box already. So let's get straight into this model. Now, this model is fantastic. So basically what I'll be going through in this review here is roughly kind of like how it looks and all that stuff. Articulation weapons. Um, then when it comes to problems and all that, it'll be in a separate video after this one where I can go into more detail about what are some of the pros and cons of this uh, kit. So anyways, let's begin. You can see this guy does have a very astray look. I will increase the brightness of the light uh, just a little bit. So as you can see, very well detailed uh, Gundam. Of course, it did have that uh, not so good gold, so I did repaint it into my own gold here. And <clears throat> yeah, the asymmetry for the arms is looking really good. That's the only place part of it. That's the only place with asymmetry on this kit. If not, the rest is all pretty much identical. The wings at the back, pretty good. And if you can hear some noises at the back, it's because it's kind of raining quite heavily. So there will be it'll be quite noisy. I can't control that. Um, as for this kit's colours, it does come with two types of black. One is more of a standard matte black, as you can see on this thigh piece here. And then you have the more glossy black, which is mainly used on the Blitz arm. I don't know if you can see it reflects like a bit more. And it does get <clears throat> fingerprints quite easily. As for the gold, we do have two types of gold, uh, both of which I did repaint a little bit. So as you can see, the first kind of gold is the better gold, which is for this foot piece here. Uh, it's that kind of nicer gold, and then there's the other yellowish gold, which I did change up into this kind of more dull gold. Um, as for the details on this kit, it is pretty fantastic. As you can see they've got like words in a uh, written sculpted into those feet and other parts of the stuff. I'll show you later in the weapons. Uh, the sticker decals on this kit, pretty okay. Um, Nothing too fantastic. Some stickers are a bit too big, um, uh, as I can show you here. One thing, <clears throat> yeah, if not, that's about it. The red is this more darker, it's just a darker red, and this is just a bit of a purplish blue gray color, which is not bad. So, anyways, let's get into some of the articulation. So, as for the head here, as you can see. We do, it is quite big, so on the head here, we have this piece that can be adjusted up and down. I don't know what's that for, but it can do that. Another thing is that a uh, head can go up, but there's a separate joint here. If I pull out the head piece, and if I can, you can see there's a head joint. <clears throat> His neck here is on a joint, so it can tilt forward about that far, and then it can be moved back as like that. So... That's about all you're gonna get, and a piece just fell out. Let's just put that on back. Put that back on, real quick. And of course, I'll touch more on the, on all the bad things about this kit in a separate video, where we will just give a small conclusion. And then for as for the waist here, the torso, we do have a swivel here, where your Amatsumina can technically turn turn a full three sixty. It does kind of get caught on some parts just because this thing is really, really pointed. So do be careful. Parts here are a bit fragile. Try not to break anything. As for the uh, forward movement, as you can see, the back skirt has this uh, thing where if you push forward, it lifts up, giving you this really neat bend. As you can see here, it's actually pretty decent. Not too bad. And then there's... Uh, small bit here which can move up and down on the torso here as well we do have a cockpit this part which just basically just pulls apart like so and there's the cockpit area of course you can there, there, there is supposed to be a figure in there but i mean to make a figure in this scale yeah it just be a massive pain to get out clean and put in there and of course you lose it pretty easily if not, this is on two joints, one main joint here and another separate joint here. It does close back up pretty good. And yeah, as for the uh, arms, we do have 
some rotation here. They can technically spin a full 360, but because of the wings here, it does get sort of limited. Uh, the shoulder here is on a little uh, thing joint here which can make it turn. Uh, the shoulder, this shoulder does go up, this for the gold arm. The, this arm is slightly different so it goes up about that far. The arm can push out about that far, as you can see there. Not too far, probably about 90. If you push this up, it will go up uh, just slightly above 90. And then can just move this back down. Also, there is a bit of a swivel here. As you can see here, just a little bit. Elbows, elbows are not too bad. They are rather decent, as you can see. Not too bad for those elbows. Of course, it is a bit loose on mine. I don't know if it's just it's if it's supposed to be like that or whether it's just mine. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, arms do have some pretty. The oops. All right, gotta stop hitting the camera. The fist, the hands here can are on a ball joint, so they just swivel around. It's pretty much standard articulation. For the other arm, it can swing out uh, slightly easier just because it doesn't have this massive blade sticking out. It's, uh, this arm is a bit more standard. This is the arm which you have to put together with your own parts. No real great parts are, uh, no real great frame is used. So the shoulder does go up uh, just a little bit like that. The, arms, the arm itself can rotate out uh, about the same as the other arm. So that's pretty decent I guess. Of course there is a swivel here as well. As for the elbows, this one I think is, yeah this elbow here is slightly better as you can see it bends just a little bit more. Nothing too much, just a, just a wee bit more. Uh, as for the fists here, the hands I mean, they are on the ball joints as well. So they will rotate the same way as the other one. Now the front skirts are individ can be moved individually. They can go up about yeah, all the way reversed like so, as you can see they're pretty insane. Side skirts here, they can move they can move back and forth like this. It's sort of different. And they can go up like that. And I will keep it like that just to show you the leg articulation. So <clears throat> the back skirt, uh there's no movement. Cause you're never gonna touch that area anyway, so Legs for forwards, um, it can go out about that far. It's a pretty good kick. I'm gonna bring keep that arm up. And then as for outwards, yeah, this is this guy has quite a good articulation here. As you can see, just because the skirt armor doesn't obstruct much, to be honest, because it's all pretty small skirt armor parts, nothing too much. There is a bit of a swivel here on the legs. Um, there is this knee joint here which does pull apart the armor. I don't know what just fell off there. Uh, some piece just came off. That's kind of weird. Let's just grab that real quick. This is the ah, this is the piece from the chest here that just pops off. I'll touch on that uh, in the separate in the next video. So the legs here do bend quite a uh, quite a fair bit as you can see here pretty good movement there not too bad actually it's actually quite good um no not much uh movement around this area here as for the uh, feet there is this spike here that can move up and down it's sort of loose and feels like it wants to come off a lot but it's actually quite sturdy uh feet are on a ball joint here so they move back and forth something like that there is another joint there that allows it to swivel out and in, no matter what you want, not too much. So that's about all the articulation you're gonna get on the main uh, Amatsumina itself. Let's just try to get this piece in here first. There we go. That should do it. There. As for the wings here, um, I'll move one wing only, so they can go out about that far. That's uh, pretty good. There is a swivel here, so they can move out a bit, uh, around a bit. Then there is this joint here. I don't know if you can see where that circle is. It allows the wings sort of a back and forth movement, just a little bit. There is this grey part here that can swivel up and down. Here there is this piece here which can go up like that. And then 
Alright, since this wing is slightly broken, I kind of broke it a bit. We're going to use this wing instead. So this wing does have some movement here, just a little bit of wiggle. As you can see there, there is a part here which can slide out just a little bit. You can see just very little sliding action there. Then the tip here, it can go down about that far, up about that far. Pretty, pretty normal stuff. So you can just like fold that back in. And the piece came off. It's okay, we'll fix that later. Uh, putting back the Amatsumina back. And we're going to take a look at its weapons and accessories. As you can see, it does come with quite a fair bit. So first, we have this uh, really tiny gold figurine of uh, of its pilot there. Don't know her name. It's on the instruction manual somewhere. Uh, no, it's on the box. Rondo Mina Sahaku. Alright. I think that's what his or her name is. As you can see, pretty well detailed. It's kind of hard to see. There's no way I'm going to paint that. It's just, it's just going to drive me mad. But it is pretty cool to get. And you can see it kind of scales, scales not too badly with the Gundam itself. Of course, it's not the correct scale. If it's the correct scale, it'd be much, much smaller. But we're going to move this side aside as well. As for hands, we do get an extra set uh, a set of gripping hands here. As you can see, uh, we have we do have one for the gray, the blitz arm, but it is attached onto a weapon just for convenience sake, so as to not make the review too long. We also do have the real great hand for the gold hand, but I prefer not to use that. So... This is the first accessory we get. So the next accessory we get are just two very, very, very basic uh, sword-like weapons, but they do look really cool, as you can see here. They look pretty awesome. They can pack into the hands here. Uh, if I do this, as you can see, I can. There is a peg on the handle here and a slot inside the hand. All you gotta do is just peg it in, close up the hand, and there you go. It's holding the this uh blade weapon which is pretty nice it's kind of flexible so you do want to watch out and try not to break it and the connection is pretty strong as well um another thing you can do with these is that on the side skirt here if i move this up these two arms up a little bit on the side skirt here you can see there is this there is that rectangular pack on that side skirt there what you can do is use the same connection point and just basically put them in there and they can just simply fit on which is pretty cool and because they're kind of flexible it is easier to get them in so it doesn't bump into things uh bump into things as you're trying to get it in but it is ra it does <clears throat> it, it does look it does give a cool look that's all i gotta say if once we're done here so i can just pack the other one in as well it gives a, it's at a sort of slight angle, so it's not exactly straight, so it does point backwards uh, just a little bit. As you can see there, looks pretty nice with that, uh, those two swords hanging down. Another accessory we're getting is this weapon here, it's called the Triceros Kai, if I'm not wrong. As you can see, you do have, I do have that other hand there. It is pretty well detailed, as you can see they got all that, all those markings. Uh, written on it. It's pretty amazing. There is some uh, hidden detail in there uh, Decals for this weapon do like to pop off quite a bit. If not, uh, details really good actually. That red P, that red part there is a piece Yeah, lots of really cool stuff. Those black dots here are not lined. They are actually poking through from this bigger back black piece here and it just looks cool. These three spikes as well. Pretty amazing. And to attach this, what you're gonna do is remove his other hand and this is the weapon I'm gonna use most of the time what you're gonna do is but before I get this on let's just get him balanced a little bit more if we can give him a bit of a lean forward give him lean forward just a little bit yeah one thing about this guy is that he is not he's not very sturdy in general he does like to pop or fall off a lot but we do have this part here which can swivel a bit so what you're gonna do is First, you're gonna attach the fist in with the hand in like so. And then there is this pack here. I don't know if you can see. Let's rotate this. There is that really small pack there. I don't know if you can point if you can see it. And there's this uh, slot on this piece that's jutting out from the arm here. What it's basically gonna do is just insert in. And the connection will be pretty strong. If I can find my way. Find the hole here. And there, as you can see, it's... 
it's not coming off. It's it's extremely strong. Uh, movement isn't hindered much. It can move, wiggle a little bit. And to be honest, this is probably one of the cooler weapons this guy has. And is the weapon I will be using most of the time when posing this guy with my other gun plug. So right now, I'm just going to try get this piece in one more time here before we continue the review. Let's just try to get this piece in. I don't know if it's just mine, but lots of parts are falling off here. Touch that uh, a bit more, touch on that a bit more in the next video. But yeah, that is the second weapon he gets. Now, the next thing he gets is the this thing called the Sumo Hano Tachi, which is kind of like a Wolverine Claw, as you can see, it does look pretty cool. Uh, it does have this guard here that can move up and down a bit. And then the claws here can extend. You can see there are three knobs at the top here. What you're going to do is just push them and they will slide out like so. You can see they will just slide out and you get this claw thing. But of course, if you want to be a bit more vulgar, you could always just, just pull out the middle claw. I mean, it's the easiest to pull out. Why not? Um, but I will be using this as well. As you can see here, there is a peg here at the bottom here and it only works on the gold arm I would think um because on the gold arm here there is that uh black slot in which can pack this into here which is pretty cool and I do like the look of that looks a bit big but still pretty nice so I'm gonna keep that there now the next weapon we are getting is this uh these two cable uh is this thing here this is actually part of the wing and this is a cable, You actually, it actually comes as one really long cable and what you can do is if I take this guy and extend the wing with the part missing, if I can bring this out, there we go. As you can see, if I pull this out, there is a hole in there and what I can basically do is insert the wiring in, if I can, like uh, so. And there, yeah, the wire is pretty strong. I'm not going to try to get it in now. It will come off a lot. So, anyways, the wire is pretty strong and will not droop uh, quite a lot. It's a good wire. So, i got to give uh, Bandai credits for that. Now, the last weapon we are getting is this uh, spear thing called the Okitsu no Kagami. And it is a pretty cool zombie. Pretty basic. There is this part that can slide up and down because this pack here plugs in the same way as the Wolverine Claws there. And you can just basically side up and down. As for articulation, this thing can rotate like that. You can see it rotates around. Uh, this part does swivel up and down, but it has one function where you can take this, put this uh, orange clear beam here, and then you can close on it. I'm not going to do it now because I've got another function to show you and it's pretty hard to get out. You can close this, clamp this down, and it will create a spear. Of course, it won't look like that. It will look a bit more. Or you can open both of these up. Take this bigger beam piece, attach it onto the thing here, and you basically got yourself a shield, which is pretty darn amazing. And honestly, I wouldn't be using this weapon uh, as much as that Wolverine Claw. I prefer the look of the Wolverine Claw. This weapon would just be more of something that is displayed on the side. Now, another thing you can do is you can uh, detach this piece here. You can get this much much thicker wire here attach it into the back here and you can basically attach it back in here but I'm not gonna do it and you do get this stand here which has a couple of points of articulation there's articulation there rotates here articulation here and articulation here as well and what you can basically do is rotate this that's it there's that really tiny peg up there and it basically just you know pegs into here I'm just gonna remove the shield part for now just packs into here connection is pretty flimsy but it's just meant to hold it up nothing more than that so if not guys that's about all we're getting for this kit it is it is a pretty fantastic kit uh i'll touch I'll, I'll tell you more about it in the next video but if not that's about it for this review thanks for watching guys i hope you did enjoy it and if you did please be sure to leave a like and also give me some feedback and if you do want to support this channel and make ensure it ensure it grows uh Please be sure to hit that subscribe button to get notified for new videos uh, pretty frequently. If not guys, that's about it. And this is The Squid.
blooping off.